Are you an avid trophy hunter? Or are you just after an infinite durability knife in Resident Evil 4 Remake? I'm Wes from Recommended Playing, and we're going to be tracking down and destroying all 16 Clockwork Castellans. This will unlock the Primal Knife bonus item and two trophies. Revolt against the Revolting for destroying one Clockwork Castellan, and Revolution Windup for destroying all of the Clockwork Castellans. There's one Castellan to destroy per chapter. These are also all tied to your master save file. If you destroy one, it will not show up in subsequent New Game or New Game Plus playthroughs. These are best destroyed as they show up, so let's start with the first one in Chapter 1, of course. Chapter 1's Castellan is at the Lakeside Settlement. This is just after the Windmill Farm area. You'll know you're close because it's after the push cart and dodging the falling rocks. You'll go through a tunnel which will take you to the Lakeside Settlement. When you enter the area, immediately head to your right. You'll need to deal with several enemies as well as dodge or get caught by some bear traps. You should make your way around the right side and take out any resistance. Then you can jump into an open window. Take out any Ganados in here and then look around for the Castellan. This is on the roof rafters on the east side. Shoot it and you'll get the Revolt Against the Revolting trophy here. Chapter 2's Castellan is not overly hidden. This is the first one you'll likely come across naturally. After grabbing the Eagle Plate and passing through the gate near the Merchant, you'll have a stealth section. Get through it and you'll climb a staircase. At the top is a transition area back to the village. There's a Chainsaw Ganado here as well as a few generic villagers. Take them out and then double back down the staircase. In the shack next to the well, you'll find the next Clockwork Castellan. This is next to a note about the Clockwork Castellans. Shoot the second Castellan on the hay bale. Chapter 3's Castellan isn't hard to find. You'll have to pass through a quarry as part of the linear path to the lake. Afterwards, you'll end up in a safe merchant area. You'll immediately want to head forward to drop down the ladder to the lower level. Now turn to your right and quickly turn left again and follow this path to the end. At the end, look up and shoot the third Castellan on the crates. Chapter 4's Castellan is the first one off the beaten path. From the lake, you'll need to take the boat northwest to get back to the lakeside settlement from Chapter 1. This is another opportunity to pick up the Castellan from Chapter 1 if you missed it as well. You will have the Insignia Key now, so you can head around to the outside of the cabin and unlock the door in the cave. This cave has a few barrels to smash and a merchant request, but you really want to head through the other door. Now use the ladder nearby to enter the forest altar. There's some treasure including a small key to collect here. More importantly, the Castellan is hidden here. From the top of the ladder, simply head north to the gate. You'll have to do some finicky positioning to shoot it, but that's the fourth Castellan. Chapter 5's Castellan requires some backtracking once again. You'll need to pass through the village again. This time, you'll need to head back to the chief's house. Work your way back via the door in the village, and then pass through the gate. Now you'll want to enter the chief's house and head upstairs. Enter the bedroom. There's a lever here. Pull it to reveal a ladder. Now that Ashley is with you this time, you can boost her up to kick the ladder down into the attic. Climb up and head through the attic. There is a lot of treasure to collect here, but you should look for a yellow crate next to a chair. Shoot the next Castellan. This is right beside the elegant chessboard. Chapter 6's Castellan is early on in the chapter. After starting the chapter, you should move forward. You'll have to do a section with enemies. Just get through this section as normal. Try not to have Ashley get clotheslined by the bull man. Afterwards, you'll be moving across scaffolding along a cliffside. Follow this almost all the way to the end, and then look to your right to find a fire. The Clockwork Castellan will be right beside the flames. Shoot it, and that's all of the village Castellans completed. Chapter 7 now takes place in the castle, so there's another set of Castellans here. You'll want to progress forward until you get to the Garador. Take this out however you see fit. Afterwards, you'll need to head back to Ashley via a linear path. The dungeon key will now open up the door to a ladder. This will take you up to a wine cellar. As you move through this room, just turn to your right and you'll find the Clockwork Castellan on a shelf in front of you. Break it. Chapter 8's Castellan requires a short detour. This is easily marked by the location where the El Gigante set piece starts. I'm just going to use a rocket launcher to end this quickly, but you should do this section as intended first and then double back to this location afterwards. Once El Gigante is cleared from bothering you, simply head down to the right. Drop down and the path will lead up to a ladder. There are several enemies up here, just take them out as normal. 
Collect the treasure along the way, and at the end of the tower on some sandbags, you'll find the Clockwork Castellan. Shatter it with your knife. Castellan number 9 is in the Hedge Maze. From the starting staircase, you'll want to head down and turn to your left. Head to the next staircase and turn left again. Follow this forward and then take the first right. Once you get to the next T-junction, you should turn left. Follow this path around to the left, then turn right followed by an immediate left. At the end of this T-junction, you should turn right. You will be accosted by dogs during this segment, so deal with them as best you can. Once Ashley's safe with you, head to the cloth-covered crates. You can grab a first aid spray and then shoot the clockwork Castellan. He's sitting by the pallet behind the crates. One more down. Chapter 10's Castellan is the first one that's very missable. You will never return to the depths after falling down and getting out. Work your way through the depths until you find a gate. There will be a purple flame indicating a merchant nearby. Head for the merchant and do whatever you need to do in here. Then exit and head directly forward into the wall. There's a sewer grate here. This clockwork Castellan is hard to spot. You have to pull out your gun and look up. Now shoot the clockwork Castellan. There's only six left. Chapter 11's Castellan is missable as well, but it's actually pretty easy to find. You'll have to go on a wacky minecart ride with Lewis as standard game progression. Once you're done that first minecart segment, you get a breather, and you have a short encounter before the next minecart section starts. In this lull between minecart rides, at the stopover area on the map, you should take out the enemies in the area to clear it out. Once you're safe, head into the main destroyed building area. Face the three doorways and then aim at the center one and look up to find the next clockwork Castellan on the top of the wall. Shoot it to break it. Castellan number 12 is at the point of no return for the castle. After finally getting back to the castle, get on the tram to head to the clock tower. Now you should head inside, open the door, and you'll get a cutscene with Salazar. Immediately after the cutscene is over, head to your left. Follow the wall all the way to the end and you'll find the Castellan on a couple of crates. Knife it to smash it, and that's one more down. The last one in the castle, too. Onto the island. Chapter 13's Castellan is the first on the island, and it's after quite a lengthy gauntlet of combat. You'll want to make your way to the marker. You'll have a choice to make to go left upstairs or right downstairs. You'll want to head to your right. This will take you down to an area with several shipping containers. There are enemies here, so take them out however you see fit. Once the area is cleared out, you'll be free to find the Castellan. Head downstairs and pass the shipping containers. The Castellan is near the green forklift. Head there and position yourself between the forklift and the truck. Adjust yourself until you can find Castellan 13 and shoot it. Only three more to go. Chapter 14's Castellan is easy to find. You'll finally have gotten Ashley back and you'll be heading through the Amber storeroom, at which point you'll lose Ashley again. Now you'll want to leave the way Sadler left. You should now head to your right and head up the ramp. There's a few soldiers here to take out, but you should continue right to find a building. Head inside and you should see the Clockwork Castellan on some lockers directly in front of you. Just shoot it, and there's only two left. Chapter 15's Clockwork Castellan is missable, so be careful here. You'll want to progress the chapter until you get the cutscene where Mike gets shot down. Now you'll want to progress through to the Specimen Storage building. This building has several regenerators you'll have to deal with. The first one's pretty easy. And this is also where you can miss the Castellan. Head right and ignore the crank. You want to head into the back room now. There's a chest here. You should loot it and then turn around and look up. The penultimate Clockwork Castellan is on the rafters above you. Blast it. The final Clockwork Castellan is very cheekily hidden during the escape sequence at the very end of the game. You want to head towards the exit as fast as possible, but the timer isn't actually a big deal. Keep moving forward until you're ambushed by a soldier at the door. This leads to a large warehouse area. Once again, the green forklift is your visual cue. Head to the back side and aim for the Clockwork Castellan on the crates to your right. That's all of the Clockwork Castellans. You'll get the Revolution Wind-Up Trophy now. Now it's just time to finish the game. You're at the end anyways. Just jet ski the heck out of there. After the credits are over, you should save your game. To gain access to your reward for destroying all the Clockwork Castellans, you just need to head into the extra shop and purchase the Primal Knife. You'll need to spend 1000 completion points. You'll have easily obtained this throughout the course of the game, but just to make sure that it's a freebie, you'll get the 1000 completion points required by destroying all of the Clockwork Castellans. The Primal Knife is a pretty hot commodity. 
The Primal Knife starts off as a reasonably strong secondary knife. Once you unlock the exclusive upgrade, which requires an exclusive ticket for 40 spinels from the merchant, or 10,000 pesetas, it gains infinite durability. 10,000 pesetas is a steal for such a powerful upgrade. This means that any time that you get grabbed, you can instantly use the Primal Knife to free yourself without worrying about destroying its durability. Not to mention parrying or attacking as much as you see fit with it. The secondary implications are that once you get the Primal Knife with the infinite durability upgrade, you can sell all of the extra consumable knives that you get, as well as shelf or sell your combat and fighting knives for extra inventory space and cash if you require it. It's really the last knife you ever need. The damage is lower than the fighting knife for sure, but never breaking makes it irreplaceable. If you don't want to use the Primal Knife for whatever reason, you can also just hawk it to the merchant for 25,000 pesetas. The Primal Knife is considered a bonus item. You can grab this whenever you want from the typewriter storage. This is a retroactive effect as it's tied to your master save file. I went back and grabbed it from a previous save file back in the castle. Once unlocked, you can grab it whenever you want. This makes it excellent for a new playthrough for the Minimalist Trophy, where you have to exclusively use a handgun and knife. It's also invaluable for standard, hardcore, and professional completion attempts. Thanks for watching. A special thank you for all my valued Patreon supporters. Your support goes a long way with helping the channel out. Recommended playing is trying to become self-sustainable, and to do that we're working towards getting and maintaining 1,000 supporters on Patreon. If you want to support the channel and see your name in the credits, there's a link to the Patreon in the description and pinned comment. You can also do the standard YouTube set of like, commenting, and subscribing to the channel. Also, click on that bell icon if you're so great. Becoming a channel member and or leaving a super chat or super thanks is also greatly appreciated on videos. More Resident Evil 4 content is on the way, so we'll see you then.